Well, probably the most important thing and, and first concern of the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children is to make sure that the men and women in law enforcement, the selected ones attending this particular class, understand the responsibilities of being a first responder. When a little one falls victim to a crime like this, time is of the essence. Time is distance. It's critical. In many cases, we've heard through training that uh, when an amber alert is issued, we may only have up to three hours. That's a lot less in a lot of cases. What we're showing uh, the men and women here today is the risk factors they need to take into consideration, how each case needs to be individually assessed as they roll into the scene, as they interview the parents, trying to determine what criteria has been met, if an amber alert can be issued, if not. Uh, if, if they need to call in outside agencies, what type of deployment they need, whether it be air, under, underwater recovery, mounted uh, patrols, all that leads to a very detailed procedure or policy, if you will. So there's less chaos and they don't overlook something that's critical. Children go missing every day, all ages and they're all at risk, whether they be a diabetic or whether a child has asthma or whether a child was lured to a, a fender in a pickup truck while he asked directions. Every case is different. So this training identifies the first responder's responsibility. And what the center will do is go through what we suggest that Orangeburg, South Carolina's Sheriff's Department put into place and have ready and conduct the training so that the men and women are prepared should that call be received. According to Justice Department statistics, and that's through the NISMART study, there are up to 2,100 children reported missing to law enforcement every day. Now that's all missing children, including non-family, family abductions, runaways, throwaways and otherwise missing, such as walkaway autistic kids. Of those 2,100 a day, um, the total everyone generally fears is the non-family or what parents called stranger danger or stranger abductions when we were growing up. Those total about 58,200 each year. And of the 58,200, most of them, almost all of them are returned. They may be hurt, they may be victimized to some degree, but they're returned alive. Only about one to 100 to 115 don't make it. Now that doesn't seem like a very big number until you divide that by 52 weeks a year. Then you're starting to get into one or two a week, and that is realistically an epidemic. All kids are at risk. And, and what we try to do is present, in addition to the first responder investigative steps and procedures, is good preventive strategies so that the Sheriff's Department here, a very proactive agency, can get out to the community steps to keep their victims, children in this county, from falling victim. I mean, crimes against kids affect everybody. What we're wanting is them not to affect the families in Orangeburg, South Carolina. Well, someone who had asked me why, after 35 years in law enforcement, would you retire and immediately continue uh, for seven and eight more years doing what you're doing? And my only response to that is, the first case I ever worked was a 10-year-old girl that was abducted and left in a field to die. Um, through the grace of, of the good Lord, she lived. And when I took her picture for the district attorney in the court case, I, I'll never forget that moment I peered through that eyepiece. As I clicked that shutter, I looked into the eyes of a 10-year-old angel that had been victimized by evil. And for some reason, that hit me not only between the eyes, but right smack in the heart. And you might call it my niche in life, but I have found that I am dedicated and will continue as long as I can to try to protect the kids in this country. The children are at risk, and if we don't step up to the plate for them, sometimes nobody else will. Okay, and one, one 
one piece of advice that you could give parents? That's probably the most vital piece of information. Someone asked me, how can we protect our kids, Craig? I mean, beyond law enforcement, just as a normal mom and dad or guardian. And my answer to that is very simple. Communicate with your children. Think about it. Every one of us looked both ways before we crossed the street. Who told us that? Who kept us from running out in front of a car? Our parents, by communication. My little 10-year-old, the first case I worked, was abducted by a man who pulled a car in front of her, blocking a sidewalk and asking her directions. She got too close to the car and he grabbed her. But think about today if you sat down with your kids and told them, hey, anytime you're walking home from school or play, if an adult driving a car, a lost adult driving a car, pulls over and asks you for directions, keep this in mind, kids. Lost adults driving cars don't ask 10-year-olds. They go to gas stations or 7-Elevens. That happens, say no, get away, and come home. Put that in perspective. That took about seven seconds, and that 10-year-old's life would have been different had she told that man, I can't help you, turned around and gone home.